Right, so I am going to be doing something more with these Coda 3s. Um, and I got in touch with the seller and they um, yeah, gave me a bit of a refund. Um, probably this woofer got knocked in, in postage, but yeah. So um, anyway, what I've done, um, I was going to film doing it, but uh, I just wanted to get on with it really. And it's a bit of a process. Um, I've taken this apart and um, yeah, just the way the cone had come unglued from the bobbin um, and just realigning where the suspension had also come away, um, it's now absolutely fine. No rubbing. So yeah, we can uh, we can use that now. So I have to be a bit careful because I've only just really glued it back together. Um, but yeah. So originally what I was thinking of doing, if um, if this didn't work out, let me just move this out of the way and put this up right. In fact, I'm just going to move you back a bit. So if this hadn't worked out, as in I didn't get a refund, um, or um, sorry, I did get a refund and, you know, um, I couldn't repair that driver or I couldn't get a, another one for next to no money then I have an 8 inch woofer from a Ditton 22 and I also have a 4 inch mid-range from a Ditton 22 um, the 8 inch woofer will, will go in this hole so what I would have done is um, enlarge this hole um, 4 inches and put a, a tube in there to create an enclosure just for the mid and to separate the base and then I would have cut the tweeter in at the top so we would have had a tweeter mid-range woofer which you know it's excessive um, then I would have had to have built a crossover I probably could have basically based that on the um, Ditton 22 crossover because this is similar impedance so I would have just had to have modified the top end um, and possibly a bit of work to the woofer for being in a smaller enclosure but yeah as it is I've repaired that woofer um, so you know really all I want to do with these is just tart them up um, see if I can improve that crossover with some parts I've got and um, then yeah they can go because um, if you remember from the other video it measured fairly well um, I think from three or four hundred hertz up to 10 kilohertz it was plus minus two or three dB so it's not bad um, but I'm certainly not going to do any more to it now um, I'm not going to turn it into a three-way just because I got the boxes and a and a tweeter. All right, I've got these other speakers I can use up, and at some point I do need to use them. Um, but yeah, let's just tart these up. You know, we can make improvements like getting rid of these crimps, soldering them on, um, new binding posts, um, and see if I've got any better components. Um, I'm sure I've got an air core inductor. I can change that iron core for on the um, tweeter and might even have something a bit bigger for the woofer anyway let's have a look look at those oh, steel and lots of it yeah right so this is the the crossover out now <clears throat> so what I want to do is kind of do a little schematic of this um, so we know what's what and see exactly what we're playing with right okay so let's have a look then right so draw this out so I'm going to put positive rail here negative rail down here just a couple of lines okay so here's our positive leg in so straight away you can see we're going through this capacitor here first and that's a 3.3 microfarad so that's 3.3 uf and then we come out of that here where do we go from there? Into a, an inductor. And that goes down to ground. Okay, so normally 
that on its own is a second order but I think we might have another cap so we come out of that we carry on with our tweeter positive there and then I think we go across yeah so then we got five microfarad in K and then into our tweeter which is connected in phase okay we don't know the value of that inductor yet because we'll have to measure that that's an iron core all right so in through a 3.3 .3, uh, in between 3.3 .3 and the 5 our inductor down to ground and then we go into our tweeter all right okay so now on the woofer circuit if we follow that positive again uh, which is there so we come in here and we've got a trace on the circuit board to the inductor here and then we go straight across so this is the output of the inductor here onto this huge great trace and then we have this very big capacitor from here onto the output of our woofer so this one here <clears throat> okay, so we come in through a iron core inductor and we have our woofer. Sorry, we have a this big cap in there as well, don't we? 450 microfarads. And I'd imagine this other value here, which I can't see at the moment. Does that? Let's have a look. So yeah, that's our negative for our woofer. Yeah, so that cap goes down to ground. Okay, so second order slope on our woofer. <clears throat> yeah, so without desoldering it, I, I don't know the value of this inductor yet. I've got to measure it. Um, we have a 450 microfarad cap on the output which um, for this impedance woofer rolls it off at about 50 hertz. Um, and then we have another cap here, but I don't know the value because it's upside down and I can't see it. So yeah, there we go. All right, just dug in there. It's seven, seven microfarad. One point seven five Millie Henry and zero point eight ohms. Okay. Interestingly, that iron core inductor, um, this is the one on the tweeter, um, which is kind of in shunt, um, has melted its cable tie. So it's obviously seen a bit of power at some point. Point two three and point seven of an ohm. Right, okay. Hmm. Might have something for that. Right, yeah, I've got a couple of um, these air core inductors, 0 0.23, 0 0.6 of an ohm, so uh, ever so slightly off on the resistance, but yeah, that'll do. It'll go in there. Um, I would just like to improve those capacitors on the tweeter circuit. I have, I have some 4.7 polys, which is near enough to the five, but the three point three is the problem. I'm not going to spend any money on these. Hang on a sec. Right, so the three point three tests more like a three point six, and it, this measured quite well. 
Um, I have some 3.9s. Got nine and a four point seven with an inductor in the middle. Same value. Yeah, okay. Let's um let's do this. We might push the crossover frequency out ever so slightly. I think ultimately we're gonna be better. It's just a shame I can't do anything with that inductor. It's not a bad gauge. Yeah, I don't have anything to take the place of this, so um, this can stay. But what I am going to do is get rid of the large cap. Um, yeah, I don't really want that in there. I know what it's doing. Um, but I don't think we need it in there. If I was to replace this with an air core inductor, which ultimately is what we want to do, they would probably cost me about 15 quid each. So there's another 30 quid. Um, I might, I might get a hundred quid for these. So I don't want to spend anything on them. Um, originally I bought them for 45. I've got 20 quid as a part refund so they owe me 25 quid at the moment um, so if I can put parts on there that I've already got then um, yeah that's definitely the way to do this and we can make little improvements by replacing those binding posts again I've got hundreds of those um, <clears throat> soldering our wires on not crimping them using spade connectors and um, yeah some better binding posts and some of these caps that I've already got I do like keeping these whilst they're rubbish components um, if I'm building crossovers um, for a speaker um, and you know in designing a crossover I, I keep these I just put some tape around them like I've done there with their value, so resistance value and uh, inductance value, and then I can just cobble, use these to cobble a crossover together. Um, once I've got got that down, then uh, I just order really good parts. So yes, there you go. Right, so that's one of the capacitors in for the tweeter circuit, and I've got rid of the 450 and soldered the cable straight to the output of the inductor. So we got rid of that. Right, so inductor's in there now. Obviously I'll need to cable tie that down. Right, so that tweeter circuit is greatly improved. <laughs> um, some of the values are a teeny bit different, but uh, yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll be all right. Um, so what I'm gonna do is reassemble this speaker and then um, measure it. Just quickly throw some sweeps at it and see, see if we make sure we haven't thrown it out um, and if it's all good, then we'll do the other one. So the other thing I'm going to do to this woofer is um, stick some neoprene pads on here. Just to try and get rid of some of that ringing, because I am dead sure that you will hear that. Even when it's fixed down. Uh, yeah, not going to hurt. Well, it's slightly annoying. <clears throat> I thought I had some binding posts which I could use on this, um, but I don't. These are really long because they've got a decent thickness of wood behind them so these are going to have to go back in there's a date stamp inside these uh, 28th of January 1983 if uh, you were at all interested figure out how to get all this lot back in there. Man, that's a lot of filling. Okay. Right, 
Right, so nicely soldered up now. None of those push fit connectors. Nice snug fit. So the cabinets aren't too bad on these. Um, they're going to get a, a good clean when I've finished doing all of this. Um, and uh, I should make some grills really, but I don't think I'm going to bother. Again, they're not going to not going to sell for much. It's a job for someone else, the next owner. is a bit dead now it's better Right, so that's one done. Um, obviously this white ring you can see here and here is the glue still drying. Um, they're held enough for me to do what I've been doing to them. Um, so yeah, I'm going to throw some measurements at this one now. Make sure that we haven't upset it. And um, if that's good, do the other one. Okay, um, our KEF Coda 3s that I wasn't going to do anything with. Um, yeah, as you heard earlier, I got a bit of a refund on these. Uh, I had the option of um, just using the cabinets and the tweeter and doing something um, with them, but I managed to repair the other woofer. Uh, all that had really happened is where the surround had come unglued at the top. Um, it kind of just twisted the bobbin slightly and it was catching in the magnet. So um, yeah, that's turned out really well. Um, I've done the crossover upgrades that you saw and one thing I was hoping for, uh, I mean, I only used parts that I had and um, one of the problems with these, horizontally, they measure fairly well, um, but vertically they were, you didn't have to go high up and there was a massive suck out at the crossover point um, and really not, thinking too much about it, using a slightly higher value um, capacitor um, on the tweeter has probably allowed it just to play a little bit lower. And now with the measurements, um, and obviously the um, other capacitor in the tweeter circuit was slightly different as well. <clears throat> and now with the measurements, um, when I'm going 10 degrees and 20 degrees vertical, which is quite a lot at one meter, um, they're really good. It's I'm surprised. And actually, if you go 10 degrees lower, um, the measurements are even better than on axis. So <clears throat> these are a speaker that wouldn't hurt to be have the tweeter slightly higher than ear level. Um, and horizontally, yeah, very good. Um, whether that's because of the slight differing values on the tweeter, or whether it's because I've taken out that 450 microfarad capacitor, um, that would have had a phase effect on the woofer. Um, so the relationship between these two might be better now and that's the reason but it's worked well um, I'm going to give them a good listen up I haven't listened to them yet but all the measurements are good the waterfall shows no stored energy um, I didn't show that before but it to me it's better um, which would make sense really so 
yeah, these have turned out okay. Um, so if you've got a pair of these, those values um, on the tweeter circuit that I've used work, work really well. Um, so yeah, these are finished. I'm not going to make a grill for them. It's just not worth my time. Um, like I say, I bought these for 45 quid. I got 20 quid back um, because of the damaged woofer, which is now fixed. Um, measuring them side by side, which I'll put up now. The extra weight of the glue, I think, it's had a bit of a difference. They're, they're ever so slightly different, but not that you're here. Um, so yeah, like I say, 45 quid I bought them for, got 20 quid back, had all the parts. So um, yeah, they're, they're gonna go back out on eBay. Uh, I'll probably just stick them out there and buy it now of 100 quid. And if someone wants to make some covers for them, then then uh, fine. But yeah, the cabinets are okay. Um, all the connections have been soldered. Unfortunately, I've had to retain the existing binding posts because um, I didn't have anything long enough to go in there. But yeah, again, that's all soldered up. So uh, improvements all round, really. So actually quite looking forward to listening to these. I think they're going to be OK. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching that one. Um, yeah, more soon.